<laughs> YouTube. Wow, it says live. Oh God, we're on, okay. Do you want me to go ahead and start putting the presentation up on there? Probably a good idea. Okay, it's a lag of about like 10 to 12 seconds. Okay. <gasps> Someone commented. Hello, hopefully y'all can hear us. It's 10 o'clock now, but we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Thank you all for joining us though.
Okay, hi everyone. My name is Sindhu Vinkit. I am a fourth year student in the Dean Scholars Honors Program at the University of Texas at Austin. And I'm really excited to be presenting to you all about science up close. And I'll introduce, or we'll introduce the rest of our presenters today. Hi, I'm Natalie. I am a third year neuroscience major here at the University of Texas. I'm very excited um, to be presenting this to you all today. Hello, I'm Simran. I'm a second year public health major um, in the polymath program. So I uh, can't wait to present to you all today. All right, so our first slide is on homemade volcanoes. So basically you can make a little mini volcano at home using very simple ingredients that you have in your own kitchen. So the first thing you're gonna need is some type of bottle to put the ingredients in and you can decorate this bottle however you like. You can use a paper mache or clay or whatever to decorate it to look like a volcano. And then you would pour some baking soda into the, into the bottle. And then when you're ready, you would add in some vinegar and, and maybe if you want red food coloring to make it look like lava. And as soon as you pour in that vinegar with, towards the baking soda, it's gonna to start to erupt. It's not dangerous at all, it's completely you know, natural, very safe chemicals. But yeah, you can make your own little volcano at home. Oh, also, the way this Kahoot is gonna to work towards the end is you're going to look at the pictures that we're showing on all these slides and try to identify them when they're zoomed in up close. That's what we mean by science up close. So make sure you're paying attention to all the pictures that we show on these slides. All right, our next slide is on space exploration. And there's lots of different things in space. We have planets, we have stars, we have comets, moons, all kinds of things. So this slide talks about some of those things. It has our sun, which is a star, and then it shows a bunch of our planets surrounding the sun. And we all, all of these things, our planets and the sun, are all part of the Milky Way galaxy. And that picture in the center is our Milky Way galaxy, which shows all of those different things that I just talked about and a lot more in our Milky Way. And the Milky Way is made up of approximately 100 billion stars, plus lots of planets that go with them. All right, our next slide is on the brain. The brain, as it says right there on the slide, is very complicated and we have many different parts to our brains. They look like they're really bumpy and swirly on the outside and they have folds and that's how you, there's different parts of the brain, they're all folded up together. So that picture towards center shows a human brain. And then if you look at rat brains, which is the one towards the right side, that looks very smooth. That's what a rat brain looks like. And our brains, our human brains, are about the size of two fists put together, which is what that image on the left is showing. So that's about how big our brains are. Rat brains, on the other hand, are a lot smaller, as you can imagine, because they're for rats, but yeah. All right, our next slide is on fruit flies. Fruit flies are actually used in science quite often. They're really small and very easy to study. They make new generations very quickly. And so they're often used in genetic studies. And genetics is like the slide says, the study of genes. And genes help create how you look. So you have a gene for your hair color, you have a gene for your eye color, for your height. All kinds of things are controlled by either sometimes very rarely a single gene, but more often than not, a whole bunch of genes working together that help create different parts of you. And so fruit flies have a small number of genes because they're pretty small organisms. And so we use them to study different things in science. All right, our next slide is on friction. So friction is a force between two surfaces. So if you rub your hands together, this is something that you guys can do as you're watching. If you rub your hands together really quickly like this, you're gonna start to feel like your hands are warm. And that's because you're creating friction between your hands. Friction is also what helps us walk without slipping, especially if you're going somewhere steep or uphill, like in the picture. The friction between your shoes and the ground is what keeps you from slipping. So friction is actually a really important force that makes sure that we don't fall and make sure, you know, things like we can make our hands warm. All right, our next slide is on plants. Plants, as I'm sure some of y'all know, are really important because plants take the CO2 or carbon dioxide that we breathe out 
and turn it back into oxygen, which is what we need to breathe in to make sure that we're alive through our lungs. So the plants are not only really important because they provide oxygen for us, but they also make food so through all the fruits and vegetables, and some of them provide medicine to keep us healthy. And so this slide has a few examples of different plants, and then it talks about how there are so many different species of plants. There are 350,000 different species, and around 2,000 are created are discovered every year. That's a lot of plants. So here's just a few examples. There are some cherries, some tulips. But yeah, you can try to think about some plants that you can identify maybe outside your classroom or outside your window. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Simran to do our second half of our slides. All right, good morning, y'all. Um, so cells are tiny little things that make up our whole body. We have so many of them that all do different things. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some of them are simple little circles, others of them can be branched like a tree, um, but they kind of depend, they kind of they kind of function in, um, and they just have different roles that they play in your body. So for example, you know, white blood cells might help your body fight whenever you get sick. And so just look out for different cells and they all have their each special function. All right. So symmetry can be identified in all forms of nature. Um, so as seen in the butterfly on the left, it is symmetrical. It has the same side, the same right and the left side. Um, so when you're taking a walk today or tomorrow, maybe just look for some symmetry in, in simple things. All right. I'm sure you guys must have seen some snowflake some um, snowflakes while, while it's snowed uh, this year. But I actually didn't know this, but they are actually, each snowflake is different um, from each other. And so they're really beautiful. And hopefully, you know, when you guys experience some snow later on, you might actually see some snowflakes. Um, yeah. All right, moving on, we have the heart, which is like a pump in your body that pumps blood to the rest of your body, which is very important. It's, oh, sorry, there we go. It is actually on the left side of your body. Um, usually, you know, when we put our hand, if we wanna say the pledge, or we can even feel our heart sometimes uh, when it's pumping really strong, but it helps us to deliver blood throughout our body and also oxygen. So it is a really important organ. All right, the eyes are what we see the world through. Um, an interesting fact is that whatever we see uh, through the eyes gets transformed into these electric signals in our brain. And that helps us interpret and understand what we're seeing. And so the next time that you're seeing something, maybe just think about how the eyes actually actually do that visually. All right, and last up, we have this beautiful golden ratio. Um, it honestly, it, it explains for things just looking uh, pretty and aesthetic. So next time you're walking around and you see, you know, a pretty flower or something, the golden ratio might be the explanation for you know, why that why things in nature um, look the way they are. All right. All right, y'all. So now it's quiz time. So what we're going to ask you to do is go to kahoot.it, which is that's the website, the link that right there that's glowing. We're going to stay on this slide for about a few seconds so that you can get that website entered. And then we're going to open the Kahoot screen so you can see the questions. So just hang in there for about 30 seconds or so, and then we'll move to the code that you need to put in to start our game.
while we're waiting on the Kahoot. I hope everyone is doing well right now. So thank you for being here again. All right, we're seeing lots of names come in. Okay, we're gonna keep it go open for another few seconds to make sure everybody's able to join the game and then we'll get started pretty soon here. Shout out to the person um, who nicknamed Naruto. I recently started watching that show. So it is really good. <laughs> Okay, we'll wait a little bit more. There's still some people joining us. So thank you for being patient. We have some more Naruto uh, nicknames, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, just so you know, we have started the Kahoot. Um, there might be a little bit of a lag, but hopefully the time makes up for that. Actually, uh, so I'm changing the settings right now, so there's less, there's more time. So okay, perfect. 
So hopefully it'll update before. I have to change each question one by one. So we're almost there. Okay. It should be all, this, all the, okay, it should all be changed. Awesome. Okay, can we stop the Kahoot and start over? Should we? Sindhu, mm -hmm. were you able to change the timing on the questions? It should say, does it say one minute? Or next to each question, if you click, click, um, just click on the science up close thing, and then see what it says next to each. Does it say one minute or still say okay, sixty seconds? Okay. Yeah. Let's try to play this one. Same code? Is it, oh, it's gonna be a different code, okay.
just about have everyone, so we'll just wait another minute or so. Again, thank you so much uh, for rejoining the Kahoot. All right, we're on our second question, which is about a butterfly. Well, oops. <laughs> this is about a blue object. Oh, it's Sorry about that, y'all. Yeah, there's still a little bit of delay from when we start the next question to when you see it on the screen, but hopefully there's better there's more time for each question, so you're able to see the question before the answer goes away. Awesome. That's a lot better than the, the first go around, so yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we figured that out. <laughs> Yep, looks like the lag is not super bad because y'all can still see the answer. All right, and it's going to go to the results now. All right, get ready to click same thing for the next question. And so we're clicking now. Ooh, looks like some people are shifting around on the leadership board. We're about to wrap up. There we go, wrapping up this question. All right, and it's gonna show the answers in a second. There we go. And we're ready for the next question.
Sindhu, did you know that the eyes actually take in images upside down and I then they know. reverse it? Yeah. Cool That's super cool. And this image, I'm sure we'll talk about it in a second once we finish answering the question, but it looks really cool. I really like those colors. But yeah, make sure y'all have enough time to answer. All right, yes, yeah, so that one was a flower. It's actually a tulip, I'm pretty sure. So pretty cool. I really like the colors in that tulip. If y'all want, y'all can uh, just comment out your favorite flower in the chat. <laughs> yeah. We see the leaderboard is changing. All right, ready for the next question. This one's a tough one. What is this a picture of? It's kind of tough. <laughs> I really like orchids as a flower so oh yeah back on the last thing I think my favorite flower is a sunflower oh it still shocks me how they how they move um depending on the sun that's yeah that's interesting that's really cool because you they change by the way they're tilted throughout the day Follow the sun. All right, we're starting to get a lot of answers for this one. All right, we got our answer. So that was friction. I know it kind of looked like a shark fin there, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I see changes on the leaderboard once again. All right, and it's time for our next question. All right, this is our next question. What do y'all think this is? You know, I've been eating a lot of oranges these days. I like the, the tiny ones, the tangerines. They're easy to peel. But they yes, taste good. we have some in my apartment right now as well. All right, and that actually wasn't an orange. It was the close-up of the fruit fly. Oh, we have some changes in the leaderboard. <laughs> All right, next question. Ooh, this one's also pretty tough, I think. Oh, wow. All Right, we're starting to get some answers. I know this one's definitely a tough one, so people are thinking about it a little bit longer. All right, and the answer to that one actually was a seashell. Actually, a lot of y'all got that right, so very proud of y'all.
and the leaderboard changes again. Ooh, it's getting competitive. When I was around 10 years old, I used to practice the phrase of Sally sells seashells by the seashore. I thought that was the coolest thing. <laughs> I know. I wonder, I don't know if, if the students these days are still on that rhyme or if they have better ones these days, but. I think everyone should know the, the Peter, Peter Pickle Piper. I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I know those song sisters are tough. Yeah. All right, we're starting to get some answers for this one. Remember y'all, it's all based on the stuff we showed you in the slides at the beginning. So if it wasn't something we talked about, then it's probably a good hint. All right, going on to the next question. This one's also a hard one. For those, are, for, um, for those of you that need to head out, thank you so much for coming. It was, it was fun to present to y'all. So thank you. I hope you'll have a great day. But yeah, we still have, I think three or four more questions. Right now we're on this swirly one. Um, y'all are starting to get answers in. Nice, all right. Question number 10. Ooh, this one's tricky. If anyone knows what part of the cell this is, um, you can put it in the chat and find out. So. Well, we're almost out of time, so it's okay. I think everybody's answered. But yeah, like Simran said, that, that is indeed a cell. So if you, for, you know, for fun, if you know, <laughs> if you know which part of the cell that we're showing, go ahead and add that to the chat. All right, and Christian still seems to be at the top, so on to our second to last question.
All right, and we're starting our last question. It's getting close. Oh, wow. That picture could actually be a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tricky one. And we're out of time. What was it? It was the volcano. Y'all did a very good job on that question. All right. And it's going to show us the results now. In third place, we have Axel. In second place, we have Joanne. And in first place, we have Christian at FISD. And it shows our runners up. We also have Izzy and, well, it went away before I could see it. Izzy and Asa. But yeah, thank you so much for playing, y'all. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them into the chat. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for attending. We really enjoyed presenting for y'all. Great job, y'all. Um, thank you so much for for coming. Um, this was great. And if you again do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. In the chat, we'll hang around for a little bit um, in case to answer some questions. But we hope you have a great day. And thank you.